Chun and Minette Louie are filmmakers who made Children of Invention, a successful movie in which they not only directed and produced the movie, but took a major part in the distribution process and, in fact, discovered some interesting paths to the public. Originally, their film was aimed or targeted at a, uh, a small sector of the movie-going public, the Chinese-American. Um, the movie was, in fact, so entertaining and so well done that it did expand into uh, a, um, a universal audience. They um, show you in this uh, interview how they took part in the distribution, how they created their own paths to the public, and indeed, without having to lose control of the distribution process, they made a profit. So I think that uh, what they have to say is very, very interesting, but most important, they aimed at a specific uh, segment of the movie-going public, so they, they knew that somebody was going to buy tickets, but the film achieved a much greater success because it was entertaining and visionary and uh, appealed to uh, a larger uh, public. No doubt you probably had uh, focus groups and uh, people, uh, committees, and uh, you tried to make a movie that appealed to everyone at all times? I, mean, I think so. Um, I think that when we were, when I was writing the movie, uh, you know, it's an Asian American film, but we wanted to, I wanted to write an Asian American film that wasn't just for Asian Americans, that pretty much anybody could, I guess, identify with the main characters and follow the story and hopefully connect with, you know, what the characters were going through. Just to add to that, it's interesting because, you know, there's a lot of talk right now about thinking about your audience and the target market for your film and then kind of working backward from there and, you know, kind of changing your script to fit that so that you're, you can ensure yourself an audience. But for this film, you know, it's semi-autobiographical based on Z's childhood in Boston and it's... Um, you know, so he didn't think about any of that stuff, and we just kind of just, you know, he wrote the script, and then, you know, we found the audience afterwards, um, and like he said, you know, we were surprised. We knew that the Asian American audience, and, and it would appeal to women and Asian Americans, but um, um, we also didn't expect it to appeal, appeal so much to sort of middle Americans who have been burdened by pyramid schemes. It <laughs> Sundance to help sell your own damn movie. Um. <laughs> Well, we we um, we did bring a publicist. We we hired a publicist, and we and we got a sales agent on board. We considered doing it ourselves, but I'd never been to Sundance before. So um, you know, we 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 got those people on board. You know, the, our publicist got us interviews and got so some you hired reviews. A, I apologize. You mm -hmm. hired a publicist just for Sundance. Just for Sundance, yeah. They, there was a couple of publicists that specialized in doing Sundance because it's uh -huh. a it's a special animal. Um, and and Is then that expensive. Yeah, it's it's expensive. I mean, it, it, can you say how much it is? I can't say how much, okay. unfortunately, but it is. You know, it's it's several thousand dollars, um, nice. and um, so it's it's pricey. But you know, do it, they start a month ahead of Sundance, or do they, they just... started about yeah about a month ahead of Sundance, sort of prepping and sending the screeners out to key press and key reviewers, um, and then our sales agent as well. You know, started calling people about a month ahead, um, calling distributors a month ahead, inviting them to the screenings and trying to get them to come to the screenings at Sundance. Okay. So, so you got into Sundance, then you got the publicist, and was the publicist worthwhile? Yeah, no, we're, we're very glad that we got the publicist because it is, like I said, its own animal, and we did not know how to navigate around the press. And, you know, it is it is sort of a, a, a press circus zoo um, type situation, so it was um, it was invaluable. Their, their help was invaluable. Uh, the sales agent, does that come before, what, oh, did you get the sales agent before applying to Sundance? Or? Pretty much right after we found out we got into Sundance, you know, I was emailing, you know, the, the following hour, you know, the different sales agents and publicists to try to get them on board to screen the film and see if they wanted to represent it. And what, what is a sales agent? Um, it's basically somebody who represents the film and tries to sell it to a distributor on your behalf. To a worldwide, to a U.S., or anything. 
far? Anything. I mean, well, we, we brought a, a North American sales agent on board with us, and then usually you have a separate foreign sales agent who specializes in the non-U.S., ter- non-North American territories. So, you know, our sales agent got the film in front of everybody he needed to get the film in front of. I mean, the, all the distributors saw it. All the major distributors saw the film. They came to see it at Sundance or they saw a screener or whatever. So we did his job. And we did get offers, but they just weren't very financially – it wouldn't have been financially responsible for us to take any of these offers because they they were just, you know – to be perfectly honest, crap. <laughs> so we decided to do it, uh, do distribution ourselves by selling the DVD of the film on the festival circuit right after Sundance. You know, we decided to play as many festivals as possible and kind of use that. Um, as our theatrical run, you know, and use all the press from from all those, these little local festivals to sell the DVD both after screenings and online. And um, when you have a short film in uh, some of these smaller film festivals, these regional film festivals, your access to people uh, is a lot greater than at Sundance. I mean, if you go to Sundance, you, you know, you might not be able to have, you know, an hour-long conversation with somebody who is, you know, uh, five, ten years further down the road. Uh, down their down their career and uh, is able to give you advice. Um, I think for promotion for a feature film, I think it's absolutely necessary to play some of these regional festivals because I mean it is. Um, I mean everybody on the festival circuit is kind of like everybody from that year kind of travels together, and they might not have a chance to watch your movie at Sundance or South by Southwest or um, Tribeca, but you know they'll see your film. There, there's other producers, other collaborators, editors, cinematographers, actors, people who are in the industry. I mean, it's important to play these festivals so that they have a chance to see it. Right. I mean, and, 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 and also, you know, I think that other regional festival, regional festivals, as opposed to Sundance and Cannes, have real audiences, you know, like real people are going to see the movie. People who aren't in the biz um, are going to see your movie. And, you know, there it was a way for us to really market test, you know, so like every Q&A session was almost like a focus group. We saw what people responded well to. We saw what they asked questions about, what they were most interested in. So that was really helpful for us in terms of, you know, informing our marketing going forward of the film. Um, and also, you know, playing at a smaller festival. You know, the the press you know, actually covers your film, you know, if you have a small film. We actually got a lot of great reviews from, um, like, capsule reviews and even, you know, features and, and interviews with, with the local press because there's more, there's more access to the press, there's more access to industry. And every, time, and every time we played at one of these regional festivals and got, you know, a good review, we would see sales spike um, off, off our website from our website. DVDs. The, the very first film festival after Sundance uh, in March 2009, uh, the San Francisco International Asian American Film Festival is when we started selling DVDs. And now how does that work? How does it go? Uh, the people have seen your movie, but they'll buy the DVD. Yeah, it's actually really interesting. It's, um, you know, we've found that, I mean, contextual selling is always best. So it's, you know, it's after, uh, after the movie is done screening, people in the audience, um, we found that 10% of the audience will buy the DVD. Um, and then if it's, and for it's an Asian American film, um, so at Asian American film festivals, we found that 20% of the audience uh, would buy the DVD. And so, you know, if you're looking at, you know, a crowd of like 300, 600 people, you know, 30 to 60 people are buying a $20 DVD. It's, you know, it's, it actually is ends up. I mean, if you're going to be at the film festival anyways, it is definitely, you know, a good a good chunk of change. We actually continued selling the DVD through our um, our theatrical. Yeah, right. So um, it was actually. You know, it was also a way of kind of bolstering our, our you know, even though it doesn't show up on Rentrac, right. you know, we did end up making um, an additional ha- like half or a third um, on top of what we, we made from DVD sales. You know, making the movie was so easy. <laughs> we, we, I mean, between the time Z finished the first draft of the script and the time we premiered at Sundance was 10 months. And, you know, it, it's all, it all seemed to happen so easy for us. The distribution was difficult because of the climate 
you know, that we just happen to be in. And it, it was, you know, self-distribution has always been hard and it will continue to be hard. It's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot Is of there leg one work. one lesson that's come out of it that you've learned that uh, you didn't expect or one surprise that uh, comes out of all this? Um, I didn't realize how much time it would take, you know? Um, I knew it would take a lot of time to distribute a film, but it, 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 it's, been, it's been very time consuming and I think that filmmakers should be prepared if they're going to make a film that's difficult to sell in the marketplace you know that um, is driven by passion that should be that should be made you know um, they should be prepared to kind of um, have their other work suffer I mean we haven't been able to focus on our new films because of this old one you know and 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 finally you know now that it's sort of we're done with the distribution of this film we've finally been able to move on but it has been very difficult to juggle distribution with new projects. Uh, have you broken even? Yes, yeah, we, 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 the, our theatrical run was profitable because our, P, our theatrical P&A was so low. I mean, it was under $5,000. So we've made more than that just for theatrical and you know if you count dvd sales and you know um uh festival screening fees then we've yeah i mean we didn't want to go twenty five thousand dollars into the hole doing theatricals and then try to make it back doing dvd i mean that didn't seem logical for us how about the uh, sales outside north america have, uh, yeah, we have a, f a foreign sales agent who, and, and a couple of Who's deals, for Forward Entertainment. How do you, what is it? Forward. Forward Entertainment. They've, uh, so they, they were the agent for Old Joy and Red Doors and a lot of, a lot of documentaries, actually. Um, and so we have sales pending in about five foreign territories right now. How did you find them? I, we found them through a producer friend of mine. Of mine. Yeah, that's right. Your odds, your movie is going to be... Exceptionally profitable or very profitable or I mean, break even? What do you think? I think we'll do a little better than break even, you know? Um, it, it, is, it is a movie that's hard to sell because it's a drama. It's, uh, it's, it's got no stars in it and it has Asian American leads. Um, but, you know, I think the majority of, of American independent movies don't even recoup. So, you know, we consider ourselves pretty lucky um, that we were able to make as much money as we have already. There's nobody who's probably going to be as effective and work as hard to promote your movie as you. Uh, so, I mean, you have to promote your own film. Sell your own damn movie. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sell your own damn movie. Nice. You know, that's a good name for a book. Maybe I'll write a book called that. <laughs>